This is a 3,500 milliamp hour 6S lithium polymer battery. And this is a 6,000 milliamp hour 6S lithium polymer battery. How is it that this one is almost twice as many milliamp hours as this one, and yet it's almost smaller? I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're going to learn something today. Well, let's get out the scale and challenge our assumptions here because humans are notoriously bad at judging volume by looking at dimensions. And maybe this battery isn't actually as much smaller as it seems like it is. The 3500 milliamp hour battery is 568 grams. The 6000 milliamp hour battery is 610 grams. So the 600 milliamp hour battery is a little bit heavier, but pretty close to the same weight and certainly not twice as heavy, which is what you would expect if their energy density was the same. Double the milliamp hours, double the weight is what you would expect. But you know, a lot of times the milliamp hour ratings in these batteries can't really be trusted. Manufacturers use shady techniques to inflate the milliamp hour. And at the end of the day, you can usually trust that two batteries of similar weight also have similar capacity. So I put these batteries on my West Mountain Radio CBA4 battery analyzer to find out what their capacity really is. And I've got the results. The green line here is the Luminaire lithium polymer battery, 3,500 milliamp hours. And sure enough, we can see right here, it got just about 3.5 amp hours exactly. It was discharged down to just 3.2 volts because if you discharge all the way to 3.0 volts, you risk damaging the battery. And I didn't want to do that. This was an expensive freaking, it's like a $70 battery. So this battery's label is damn near dead on in my test. The Gepar C lithium polymer battery is this red line and it was discharged under the exact same conditions as the Lumineer battery. And we can see it clearly performed way freaking different. It got over five amp hours, 5.0 amp hours, and it could have kept going. Do you see that the discharge curve for the GEPRC battery is basically a straight line? At no point did it hit that sort of fall off a cliff that happens when a lithium battery reaches the bottom of its discharge uh, voltage. And the reason for that is that this battery can be discharged way below 3.2 volts. That's one of the things that makes it special. And this area under the curve right here, this is some of that additional milliamp hours that this battery packs in that this battery doesn't. But it's not all fun and games for this. Why don't we all just run lithium ion batteries since they have so much better energy density? There is something you give up. And in order to demonstrate that and to find out just how freaking low this battery can really go, we gotta take it outside and fly it. For the first flight, I'm not even gonna recharge this battery because I wanna find out just how low it can go before it starts to drop off that cliff and the voltage really sags out. And I don't know what that number is gonna be in real life. On paper, these batteries can go down to 2.5 volts, whereas a normal lithium, uh, lithium polymer battery only goes down to 3.0 volts. But in reality, they don't all make it all the way down to 2.5, and I don't wanna just discharge it on the bench and kill it, or risk killing it. So I'm just gonna cruise this around gently until I start to see the voltage sag out, and then we'll see how far we get. But I'm not gonna make you wait and watch the whole thing. Uh, I'll just fast forward to the interesting part. Oh God, I'm already way higher in the throttle than I thought I would be. And, oh God, oh God, I just realized something. The low bo voltage beeper is gonna be beeping at me constantly. I have to go change the low voltage threshold. The default Betaflight settings are that it will begin beeping at you that your battery is low at 3.5 volts, and then the absolute minimum where it's like, no, seriously, you're about to fall out of the air is 3.2 volts. But if you're using lithium ion batteries, those settings are not correct. These batteries can go at 3.5 volts and they're not even starting to fall off that cliff. So we need to change these settings. Otherwise it's gonna be just beeping at us, being annoying and just generally giving us bad information. I have gone in and set this to 2.8 volts as my warning and 2.5 volts as my absolute minimum. But don't just copy those numbers because like I said earlier, different cells have different real world capabilities and we're gonna wanna just test this to really know what the battery's capable of. Okay, now for real this time. We are at about 3.5, 3.6 volts. 
and I'm just gonna run it down and see where we go. 3.3, oh boy. Oof, see if this was a lipo, I would be real concerned right now. I'm gonna do it over the field in case I have to sit down suddenly. And what I'm looking for is the sudden drop in voltage that indicates that we really, really have hit the bottom of the pack. I don't wanna kill this pack though. This is like a hundred dollar battery pack. So should really do this over near me so I can go unplug the battery quickly. 3.1 volts. If this were a LiPo, it would just be sagging out and I'd be just falling out of the air. A LiPo just could not hold 3.1 volts under this load. 3.0 volts. Uh, whoops, something is wrong. 15.1, 15.0, hang on. It has misjudged the number of cells. It's miscalculated the number of cells. Has it? 3.0, oh, it thinks this is a five cell battery. Uh, that's a risk. Hang on, I gotta unplug it. Betaflight is capable of showing you the pack voltage, which is the voltage coming off the XT60. For example, uh, 25.6 volts for a fully charged 6S battery. That's 4.2 volts times six. But it can also show you the average cell voltage. And to really know what each individual cell voltage was, it would need to be able to look at the balance plug, but of course it can't. So all it does is it takes the pack voltage and divides by the number of cells, and that's what the average cell voltage must be. But how does it know how many cells you've got? By default, it tries to auto detect the number of cells based on the voltage that it sees when you first plug in. It assumes that the battery is fully charged and divides and figures out based on the voltage range of the cells what it must be. But if you plug in, a discharged 6S that's down at like 3.2 volts per cell that looks like a fully charged 5S and it throws off the algorithm. The answer is to go in to the CLI and manually lock the number of cells. For example, I know that I will always be flying this quadcopter with 6S batteries, so I'm gonna go to the CLI and lock the number of cells to 6S. Ah, perfect. Now that I have locked that cell count, the average cell voltage is gonna stay correct. Actually. Yeah, no, we were at 15 volts and it was reading three volts per cell. That's clearly not right. Oh gosh, now we're at 2.7 volts per cell. And it's gonna start beeping at me, but I'm gonna ride it out because I think we can go further. 2.5, oh gosh. No, this is, this is bad. I don't want to kill this battery. What's it going to come back to? 2.7, 2.8. What's happening here is that while I'm flying, the voltage sag from the motors pulling current from the battery is causing it to go below 2.5 volts per cell, but it's bouncing back to like 2.8 or 2.9 volts. I think we can keep flying, although I'm not really sure if I'm damaging the battery in the process. Oh no, I got nothing, I got nothing. I got no punch. It's very unhappy. I don't like this. I think I'm gonna stop here. We got this GEP RC lithium ion battery down to about 2.7 or 2.8 volts per cell before it started dropping off the cliff and going below its 2.5 volt minimum. I did a couple little throttle punches just to see if it had any gas and it didn't. So we didn't get all the way down to the theoretical 2.5 volts that some cells claim they can get to, but we still did way freaking better than we would have with a lithium polymer battery. So then why don't we all just run lithium ion packs? In order to answer that question, I've charged up this lithium polymer pack and we're gonna test its performance in a different way that shows off its strengths. But before we do that, can I take one second to remind you that I have a Patreon. Patreon is a website where you can subscribe to me for as little as $2 a month or more if you feel like I've earned it. The amount you subscribe at is totally up to you. Just ask yourself how much value you get out of this content, entertainment, education, maybe making better buyer decisions, spending your money smarter based on a review, however much you think that number is, 
go ahead down to the link in the video description below and sign up. If today is the day that you feel like I've earned your support, then the link is there. If today's not that day, that's cool. I'm gonna keep making the content. You keep watching the content and hopefully that day will come. So what we've got here is a fully charged battery. Don't uh, mind the fact that it's reading 4.0 volts. That's because it's under load. Trust me, it was fully charged when I started this flight. This is the lithium polymer battery and we're gonna do a full throttle punch out. And did you see that it dropped basically to 3.6 volts? We really got up there and We'll do another one. Now we're back at 4.0 volts though. We'll do another one. It's holding at 3.6 and it is really getting up there. We're just going, I'm really holding that full throttle punch so you guys can see the effect uh, on the battery. Now let's do the same thing with the lithium ion battery. And the first thing I want you to notice is that even here during cruise, we are already seeing more voltage sag on the lithium ion battery than we were on the LiPo. The LiPo started at about 4.15 to 4.2 volts and was holding at about 4.0 volts during cruise. Here, we have a fully charged lithium ion battery and it has gone down at cruise to 3.85 volts, 3.88 volts. So what will happen when we do a full throttle punch out? Wow, it went down to like 2.9 volts. And I'm gonna have to get on the throttle much earlier in that dropout to avoid just tanking into the ground. Let's do another one. We got up there, but we didn't get up there as fast. And there was much more voltage sag, much more voltage sag. Now the good news is that when this lithium ion battery drops down to 2.8 volts, it's not being damaged. That is within its safe range. Whereas if it was a LiPo battery, going below 3.0 volts would mean it was taking damage. But the lithium ion battery cannot deliver the power. It's gonna have a lot more voltage sag than the lithium polymer battery. And that means it's gonna be good for cruising but it's not gonna be good for anywhere where we have to do big punches. I mean, it can kind of work its way through, but as we get into these big punches, we're gonna see the, we're gonna see the voltage sag a lot more and we're just gonna get a lot less power and I'm gonna have to be a lot more aware of the throttle and it's gonna trick me at the end of the battery where I'm gonna wait till the last minute on a big drop and I'm gonna tank into the ground because it's gonna just sag out on me when I didn't expect it. But it's gonna be way more consistent. Look, do you see that even after all that nonsense I was just doing, we're still holding at about 3.8 volts. So as long as I am not pushing it too hard, it's just gonna kinda slow and steady wins the race. Just hanging in there. I could do another full throttle punch and get up there. The voltage will drop lower and I will have less RPM but it's just gonna keep delivering those milliamp hours until we get to the end of the pack. Just the whole time I'm flying here, I'm nervous. My, I, I'm like, normally I would wait till the last minute to get on the throttle, but I'm getting on the throttle earlier because I'm just worried that it's gonna sag out and put me into the ground. Right there, see like that, that was a, 
It worked out okay, but it was a little late on the throttle. And if I had been later in the battery, I could have just tanked into the ground because the battery would have given out on me. Oh boy, where am I going? But it's not as bad as all that. because this battery, when it sags, still has some life left in it. It just doesn't have the punch. See, no punch there. I'm going full throttle and it's not really accelerating, is it? No, see, it's not really accelerating. The takeaway from this video is that you gotta choose the right tool for the right job. But I think a lot of people could be benefiting from lithium ion batteries and aren't giving them a fair shake. If you are a racer who needs incredibly fast throttle response, or if you're a freestyle pilot who does a style of freestyle where you need just like beep, 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 quick throttle blips like Spang comes to mind, then you're gonna wanna stick to lithium polymer batteries because lithium ion batteries are not gonna give you the same top end power. They're gonna to sag to a lower voltage and you're gonna have less RPM at the prop and they're not gonna give you the same responsiveness. But for a lot of people who do more sedate style of freestyle or people who are more focused on just cruising and exploration, a lithium ion pack is gonna give you in the ballpark of twice the milliamp hours for approximately the same weight. What you should do is you should look at the weight of the lithium polymer pack that you currently use, and you should go find a lithium ion pack that is in approximately that same weight range. So for example, if you're using a six cell uh, 1300 to 1100 milliamp hour pack lithium, lithium polymer, you might get a six cell 3000 ish milliamp hour uh, lithium ion It'll gonna be a little heavier, but it's gonna give you way, way longer flight time. And as you saw, you can kinda even freestyle it as long as you're a little bit careful on the throttle and don't need to go full throttle punches just wah to the moon too often. In order to make your life a little bit easier, I'm gonna look up some lithium ion packs that roughly correspond to a lithium polymer pack you might be using, and I'll put links down in the video description where you can pick those up. Full disclosure, those are affiliate links. I get a small commission if you use those links. If you wanna support the work that I do here, but you don't wanna join my Patreon or support me in any of the other ways, using those affiliate links is the simplest and easiest way to do it. The commissions are small, but they do add up when you make purchases after clicking those links. Some people are so excited about the potential of these lithium ion packs that they've built whole quadcopters based around plugging in one of these 18650 cells, just like it was a double A. And I don't know, I have really mixed feelings about that. It might be taking a good thing too far. I'm gonna put a couple links on screen, cards on screen, for reviews I did of these quadcopters so you can check them out. And there's links in the video description if you can't see the cards for some reason. I'll see you there.